Good afternoon and a warm welcome to today's collective worship, which today will be a tour of St John's Church in Stadley. So please join me in silence. So a warm welcome to St John's Church for today's collective worship and a little tour around the church. I want to start by just spinning the camera around and letting you take in what people see as they first enter the church. It's quite a wonderful, magnificent building. It's very large and echoey, as you might be able to hear. It's very old in places, uh, some of it dating to the Norman times, 1066, some of it in the 15th century and some of it in the Victorian period. So I'm just going to turn the camera around quickly and let you take in uh, St John's as people see it as they enter. So one of the first things people see as they come into St John's Church is the font. And it's placed by the door, or as near to the door as possible on purpose. Because it is by the door that we enter church, and it's by the font that we enter into God's family. Uh, it's called the font, uh, where we get the word fountain. And this particular font is probably 900 years old. And I wouldn't want to have to start counting how many children and adults have been baptised in this font. And with the font, we have our Easter candle or our Paschal candle. And this is lit on Holy Saturday, the day before Easter Sunday, um, from a fire which we have outside. And it's engraved with Alpha and Omega, and the year is engraved on it. And this is late all through Easter time, from Easter Sunday through for 50 days to Pentecost. And uh, it, we light it for baptisms and the, a candle is lit from that for the child to receive when they are baptised. Here we have our shrine to Mary, the mother of God. Uh, we have a statue here of Mary with uh, the infant Jesus in her hands. And we consider Mary to be not only the mother of Jesus, but also the mother of the church and the mother of, and the spiritual mother of every Christian. And behind us we have the altar, uh, which uh, normally there's a mass celebrated here on Saturdays uh, in honour of uh, Mary, the mother of God. And this altar is a stone altar, one of the original ones. Uh, if I just lift this back, you'll be able to see um, the stone, a very thick stone slab um, is where uh, a mass is celebrated there each week um, when we're not in a, a time of Covid restrictions. It's possible to light a candle here. Uh, people often light candles when they come into church. Candles are a very important symbol of Christ, the light of the world. And here there's an opportunity uh, for Christians to come light a candle, offer some prayers and ask Mary to pray for them as well. What we are looking at now is our rood screen, or the top of the rood screen. It separates the public part of the church from the choir and the sanctuary. And as you go further into the building, the space has become more special and sacred. This screen symbolizes the division between earth and heaven. And because of the death of Jesus on the cross, we can see through into heaven and even pass through earth into heaven. And as you can see at the top, we have Jesus on the cross. Mary on one side 
and the beloved disciple on the other. And here we can see up through the rude screen into the choir and up to where the high altar is. These seats facing each other we can see here for part of the church where the singers stand and sit. They are called the choir and confusingly so is the place in which they sing. In this place the service of Evensong is celebrated every Sunday evening. The sanctuary lies beyond the low rail where we kneel to receive the body and blood of Christ in the bread and wine of the Mass. In the sanctuary stands the high altar, the most special and holy place of the church. Here, every Sunday morning, we offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass, one of the greatest gifts of God to fallen and suffering humanity. What we do here each week is helping to defend our town and parish against evil, sin and suffering. And the more people who come help us to offer it, the more good we can do. So here we are in the sanctuary next to the high altar. It, as you can see, it's a, again, it's a stone slab that's set on some stone pillars at the side to hold it up. And this altar was the same altar that Mass was celebrated on in the Middle Ages. And during the Reformation of the Church, it was ordered that this altar should be broken up into pieces and dis destroyed and got rid of. Um, but the people of Stavely uh, refused that order and buried this altar in the ground, in, in the church grounds. And it was uh, found um, later on, uh, much later on, and restored to its current position. As you can see, uh, there's lots of damage on it uh, from when it was moved and when it was buried and obviously when it was, probably when it was dug up and returned to its place here. So Mass has been celebrated on this altar um, for um, a very long time, from the Middle Ages, uh, and now we continue to celebrate Mass here, uh, Sunday to Sunday. We're now standing in the Freshville Chapel. This chapel dates back to the 15th, 15th century, when the Freshvilles lived in the house next door, and they wanted somewhere to bury their dead and for masses to be offered for their souls. And so here is the, uh, one of the memorials to the And here is another memorial to the Freshville uh, family. I'm going to take a, a close-up of the inscription. It isn't written in modern English. It is unusual uh, for this time of year to have such a bright sunny day, uh, but I hope uh, you can read this inscription and uh, see how the, lang how the language uh, of the time has changed to modern English. Here we have a life-sized statue of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist who told us to make a straight way to prepare for the Lord. St. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus. It is John the Baptist who baptised Jesus in the Jordan and proclaimed that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And John the Baptist's followers went on to be followers of Jesus. It's rather an imposing figure and quite a, a good depiction of John the Baptist with his camel hair and his sort of gaunt figure from his diet of locusts and honey. John the Baptist lived out in the desert, uh, so wouldn't have known many of the comforts that we enjoy today. What we're looking at now is the nave. This is where the people sit. A nave in Latin means ship. And it's often said to be like Noah's Ark, protecting the people from the trials and tribulations of the world, where they can come in here and 
be closer to God. So here we can see not only a speaker, uh, but the statue of St. Michael. And St. Michael is the patron saint of people who work in dangerous places. And if you look under the statue of St. Michael, here is a miner's one. And this is also our miner's memorial, in which we remember all those who have lost their lives in the mining industry in this area. It's also a place where people come to light candles and lead prayers. And finally we have a room that not everybody sees. We call this the sacristy. And in it you'll find um, all the vestments that we wear for mass. They're in these cupboards and there's also um, cupboards uh, for um, more vestments and things uh, for the choir to wear. There's also the charcoal, the incense, the wine, everything we need uh, to, for, the, for the services, for the masses and benediction to run smoothly, we find it here. We also have our very large safe in which we keep the parish silver, the chalices and the plates uh, that we use for collection. Not everyone gets to see in here uh, and it's usually in here that uh, I get the vestments out and dress someone up in the vestments for people to see. Uh, but I've done that on a, on a different video on how we prepare for Mass. That concludes our quick tour around St John the Baptist in Staveley. If there are any questions, uh, get uh, your teacher to email them to me uh, and I will try to answer them. And I look forward to welcoming some of you here in person once the COVID restrictions have been lifted. Thank you very much. God bless.